Hello everyone. This time we are going to talk about the store warning. You can see this is an approach into a movie. This is a remote airstrip on the Atlantic coast of Costa Rica near the border with Panama. I'm doing an approach at very slow speed because the landing strip is very rough. So I want to arrive at a minimum speed. So the stall warning is going off during the approach. Is having the stall warning going off during the approach a bad procedure? Is it a good procedure? We'll discuss this and more during this video. Total length of this airstrip is about 800 meters, but only about 300 meters are usable. matter, I invited Corey Robin, Jorge Council, CC Popok, and Paddy Pilot. See what their opinions are about the soul one. slow and get the most out of the airplane that stall warning have to be going off for your approach and landing this is the same landing here you can see the way I control the airplane with throttle and the yoke Warning of final is good for very short landings in the back country, rush trips of airport or gravel points. For longer trips or runways, you definitely do not need to come with store warning going off. Here is an example of a landing on the big runway at Arlington Airport in Washington. I do not come with the stall warning going off. Stall warning goes off just when I run out for the flare. On this particular landing, I'm going to flare and then continue on ground effect one feet high as a training to get a feel of the airplane at very slow speeds with a stall warning going off. This exercise is all by feel, no angle of attack indicator or airspeed or stall warning, just by feel. It's an excellent exercise to get a feel of the airplane. trying to maintain the altitude with throttle and control my airspeed with the yoke to stay one foot high or the runway as training to get a feel of the airplane at very slow speeds. Anytime I'm landing at a long runway and there is no traffic, not many airplanes around, I will try to do this exercise with, which I think is an excellent training. For this video I have four guests, they are all very accomplished backcountry pilots, so I want you guys to hear their opinions about store warning and fine. First is Colin Robin who is a very popular 
Hey guys, Corey Robin here. When my friend Larry asked me to talk about the usefulness of the stall warning horn on short final in the flare, it really caused me to think because any device, whether it be a stall warning horn, an angle of attack indicator, which is probably the best warning of an impending stall. All those devices are fantastic and should be used in an aircraft. I've even seen guys disable them, which I don't recommend. I don't enjoy seeing that kind of thing, but there's no substitute for good old fashioned proficiency. Knowing your aircraft in its current configuration, also for the current conditions. That's gonna be the best thing that's gonna keep you alive and safe from those impending stalls. But I gotta say, I do love the stall warning horn as well. Thanks, Larry. Paddy Pilot is another YouTuber. He flies a Pilatus Porter in Papua New Guinea, an experienced bush pilot. So let's hear from him. Okay, so stall warning on final, yes or no, and why? I'd say it doesn't really matter. Um, some stall warnings are more sensitive than the others. I've been flying a caravan before and you're going like 80 knots on final approach and just gusts of wind are affecting the stall warning. So I think the things you've got to watch out for are the airspeed and your nose attitude and just uh, flying by the seats of your pants as well. Bush Air is the specialized fly school for bush flying. The instructor is Milne C.C. Popok. Let's hear from him. If you're landing in the back country, especially in a short field or one way in, one way out mountain strip, or any challenging landing environment, if your stall warning is not on during your approach to land, you should not be there. If you're afraid to fly your aircraft with the stall warning on low to the ground during an approach to land, you don't know your aircraft. You're afraid of your aircraft. Get to know your aircraft. You don't belong flying anywhere in the backcountry if you're afraid to fly your airplane with the stall warning on during an approach to land. Period. That's it. You're a less safe pilot if you're afraid to fly your aircraft with the stall warning on during an approach to land in the backcountry, especially into a short strip or a short one way in, one way out strip. That's the bottom line. My experimental 170 behind me here doesn't have a stall warning. Why? I disconnected it because it's irritating. It's on all the time. Whenever I'm flying around out in the backcountry, I'm always flying slow. I'm always doing short landing and takeoffs uh, in uh, marginal landing areas out in the backcountry, off airport. The stall warning is always on, so it's irritating. I don't need it. It's of no help to me. A stall warning is of absolutely no help to me. If the stall warning is not on, then it means that I'm approaching too fast and I shouldn't be in that position right there. So get to know your aircraft through a proper flight test at altitude. Get comfortable with flying your aircraft with the stall warning on. Now let's hear from John Jockhead Consul. He's a former F-15 instructor, bush pilot and flight instructor. We fly together all the time. I have learned a lot from him. He also has a YouTube channel. Howdy everybody, Jughead and Dakota here. Hey, we were really glad when Larry at Backcountry 182 and Backcountry 170 called up and said, Jughead, we want you to help us talk about this next topic because I think it's an important one. It's where should that stall horn be when I'm coming in on approach, whether it's to a stool competition, a short field runway, or maybe a sandbar? Well, the answer is it depends. In my stock wing, stock engine, Cessna 170, normally I will, if I can, I'm gonna come in on an idle, full aft yoke, full aft trim, four degree, very steep glide path at around 45 mile an hour. When I do that approach, the stall horn is gonna be going off the entire time. My stall horn typically goes off about five mile an hour before the wing breaks. So if I'm not in the stall horn, I know I'm not max performing the airplane. 
But if I'm coming in on a behind the power curve approach where I'm running 16, 17, 1800 RPM on about a two degree glide path like I'm coming into a, a sandbar with no obstructions or maybe a stroll competition line, depending on my weight, depending on my CG position, I'm going to be in and out of that stall horn, just probably tickling it. And then when it actually comes time to land, simply taking the power off or reducing the flaps to allow the airplane to touch down. So that's Jughead and Dakota's tip for it. Come see us. We'll put these applications in real use on YouTube at Jughead Council as we go flying, hunting, all sorts of adventures. Thanks. Back to Larry. Thank you, Joghead. Thank you, CC, Corey, and Party Pilot. So, after hearing those opinions, you hear seat of the pants being mentioned. This means feeling the airplane, knowing the airplane, knowing what will it do at certain speeds and configurations. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to get a feel of the airplane. I started to train to fly in the back country when I was a very low time pilot in Costa Rica and I was trying to approach slow and when I was approaching with slow warning going off it was kind of scary because I didn't know when will the airplane stall so I have no way to measure that. Seats of the pants will give you that measure, you will feel the airplane but for a pilot who is learning I found that the angle of attack indicator was a great tool because I could see in the display how much lift I got. Even the stall warning when went off, I could fly the approach with the stall warning going off at slow speed. I was watching the angle of attack indicator display showing me lift, so it was not as scary and that taught me a lot. I have been flying with uh, an angle of attack indicator for more than 2,000 hours. So after some years of flying and hours and hours, you start developing a feel for the airplane. You get a seat of the pants, feel of the airplane, and then you can ride the stall warning safely because you're feeling what the airplane is doing. But as a new pilot, do not try to fly the stall warning by seats of the pants because you won't have the feel and that will be dangerous. This is an approach into Lower Loon in Idaho. I'm doing a slow approach. The airstrip is not very short but it's not that long either. Stall warning is going off. So I will ride the stall warning all the way to the landing to do a a slow landing so I don't need that much room and also it's more forgiving for the airplane in case you hit uh, a hole you didn't see or rocks or branches the slower you come the better it is the GoPro app showing us the speed. This airplane stalls at about 38, 37 miles an hour around and you will see that the stall warning starts going off about 12 miles an hour before that. warning start going off at 48 miles an hour. Touchdown was at 42 miles an hour. So if the airplane stalls at 40, 38 or 37, I have a cushion of about 4 miles an hour. 
42 miles an hour is between DSO 1.1 and 1.2 if I don't ride the stop warning I will have to approach and land at 49 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour that is 8 miles an hour faster so at the end you will take a lot more room so you will be more limited to the places you can land now let's watch the takeoff it's a bit of a slow warning I leave plenty of speed for takeoff you should push the nose so the table is up and I add 10 more degrees from 20 to 30 degrees and then I pull the jaw and reduce again to 20 degrees we have been talking about is seat of the pants feeling the airplane some airplanes give you more feedback than others in the case of the C69 Chang here landing at Fall City I use the angle of attack indicator this airplane does not give you as much feedback as the Cessna 182 or the Cessna 170 and this airplane does not have a store warning so for normal landings, big airports or runways, definitely you do not need the stall warning going off on the board. But country flying, challenging places, you need it. Depends on the airplane how much. An angle of attack indicator will help you learn your airplane. Save you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to support Backcountry 182, please join me on Patreon. See you next time. It is very easy to join, to be a patron of Backcountry 182. Go to the uh, YouTube channel on the right hand side. There is the link and then it takes you to the patron page. Here you can see all the tiers and what is all about the support for Backcountry 182 YouTube channel. Also another way to access the patron link is in the description of the video I put in YouTube on Backcountry 182 channel there is a link for Patreon so just click on that and it will take you to the page thank you for watching it would be amazing if you guys are interested and give some support